Hi guys, it's Silverettes again, and I just realized that I, I just recorded this, this commentary and then Audacity uh, screwed up somehow and didn't record it. But anyway, so I'm gonna do this all over again. And um, so basically what I'm doing right here is I'm building a facade in between the free fly coaster and the inverted coaster since there are two, there's supposed to be two entirely different types of coasters. But I, I felt like if I didn't add something in between, I wouldn't have that border. I wouldn't have a smooth transition from one to the other. I, I didn't really want to see that fr that inverted coaster right away from the free fly coaster and vice versa. So I'm just building this facade right here, and it's still going to be in the style of the free fly coaster. And I feel I felt like adding a little plaza with houses around it and little towers and fancy stuff around the first turn since I figured I might as well try and I, I, I've been worrying about that first turn for a while since I couldn't really come up with anything interesting to place over there. I didn't just want to add foliage to it, I wanted to theme it about as heavily as the rest of the ride and the rest of the ride isn't themed to the foliage, it's actually the buildings that are the most important point. So I really wanted to get that in the beginning to right away. And this also um, gives you uh, a nice little view to look at when you're in the when the, when you're in the queue or on that path right there next to the station. So that's pretty cool. The only thing that I'm worried about right now is the fact that this is all looking kind of similar. Like something is happening, and this is something that I'm very afraid of when it comes to Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 building, since I am building houses all over the place. There's many buildings in this park which is actually something that I wanted to do I wanted to add many details and um, just mess with architecture in this park but the only problem is that I'm getting I'm getting used to this tile as as ridiculous as it may sound and it was uh, probably a bad idea in hindsight to do Alpine medieval steampunk because it makes no sense because steampunk part of steampunk by the way is that Victorian architecture or at least the industrial parts, and that's and both of those things are some uh, things that you can hardly do when you're doing alpine or medieval, um, let alone alpine medieval. So that's one problem that I have. So it's it's kind of turning out like it's all looking a bit the same, and I definitely don't want that to happen. So I'm glad that I actually turned the entrance into a more castle part, and the free fly coast is more um, alpine. But I think that I'm gonna um, tone it down on the buildings for the inverts and just use other stuff because otherwise it's gonna look too similar. Now this is just me building that little plaza over there and I, I tried using different terraforming um, things. I realized that there's this one texture with the terra painting, the sandstone I think it is. It's something that I definitely need to use in this park at some point because it looks really cool. But the thing with this plaza is also the fact that if you just have ground, what I see many people doing is they spam ground shrubbery because I don't know why it gives some, it gives you something to look at. But the problem is that in real life, or generally in the general sense of things, the ground isn't riddled with flowers or anything like that. Hell, you're gonna have handyman have to water those things every day, so that's not fun. So I figured I could just add a little square thing over there to have something to look at, have some nice scenery around it without making it look ridiculous and unrealistic. Now this is where I messed with the um, Efteling set by the way in this building and then decided to not do it because it didn't work out quite as well as I thought it would. So I'm gonna resort to Alpine again, so that kind of sucked. And then I was like, and you, you know what, screw that building, so I'm just gonna work on something else. Now. I don't want to over-theme the inverts building-wise, but um, by the way, these gables from uh, Station Gyms, um, what, is it, what is it called again? Ghost cabins are, are amazing. But I didn't want to over-theme this ride building-wise, but the only thing I had was just this little this little thing between the, the helix and the loop was just... I, I could not not build a building over there because it, it, it's just perfect. So that's why I messed with that. Try to add some little windows, didn't quite work out. Try to add little cog pipes, didn't really work out. So all of that gets removed at some point. Now that's also something that I wanted to talk about, and it's actually um, Heth 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 or HS Designs rather um, taught me about the fact that steampunk isn't just in the copper and the cogs, which I thought about, and I was like, yeah, it, it isn't. You can have a perfectly steampunk building without any cogs or pipes and um, 
There, there is of course the other mechanical stuff, um, loads of ironworks and other um, general industrial things. But then again, there's also the architectural style, the Victorian um, style that you have with steampunk. Now I was like, yeah, that's all cool and stuff, but I am building a medieval alpine steampunk park, and then I was like, damn, that's that's really stupid. <laughs> that makes no sense at all because part of what steampunk is is actually the architectural style. So I decided to, yeah, not do any of that and and do an alpine medieval steampunk, which makes no sense. So that's one of the problems that I have right here, so I definitely need to find some things out to make this look steampunky without too many cogs or pipes, because I definitely don't want to make this look like a factory of any, of, of, of some sort. So, but it, it works out pretty well though. The medieval slash alpine um, works out somewhat well when you, when you mix the castle walls into the alpine buildings, as you see. But um, the last thing that I'm going to have to do is actually get some steampunk in there. Now this is something that I tried, uh, which actually worked out to some degree since it looked steampunk, castle-ish and alpine at the same time. But I removed this uh, later on because the idea behind this is that you have a big tower on the lift hill that you can look at from um, both the on-ride of the inverts and the path underneath it and it should look very impressive and high and all that. But it didn't quite work out the way I wanted it to, um, yeah, in the end. So I just I decided to just remove it. And this is the this is the part where I'm still wondering whether I should actually theme this ride with buildings and stuff, or whether I should just add foliage to it. And I think I'm just gonna go for the foliage because I don't want to bother with more buildings than than I've already tried, and then removing them in the end. Because what I feel is that if I add too many buildings to this, I can add a building here and there, but if I add too many buildings to this, it's going to end up looking like the rest of the park, and I don't want to create something that's repetitive. So I'm just going to make this some sort of a forest, um, not magical, but some sort of a forest something, right? <laughs> I have no clue, actually. But yeah, this is <laughs> so this is basically me building buildings that I'm going to remove in the end. But anyway, that'll be it for this episode, so thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.